The mutilation or cutting of female genitals, also known as FGMC and child marriage, are human rights violations and manifestations of gender inequality. Yet these age-old traditions continue today. More than 130 million girls and women alive today have undergone some form of FGMC in the 29 countries in Africa and the Middle East where it is most common. This is four times the female population of the United Kingdom. The practice of FGMC is also found elsewhere, but the exact number of girls and women affected in these other places is largely unknown. The practice is almost universal in countries like Somalia, Guinea, Djibouti and Egypt, where more than 90% of the female population has been cut. Overall, the chance that an adolescent girl will be cut today is about one-third lower than it was three decades ago. Dramatic reductions in the practice of FGMC have been found in certain countries, including Liberia, Kenya and the United Republic of Tanzania. Despite progress, as many as 30 million more girls alive today may be cut in the next decade alone if action against FGMC is not accelerated. This number will continue to grow as the population of girls in affected countries rises. By 2050, nearly 500 million more girls and women will be living in these 29 countries than are there today. If there is no reduction in the practice between now and 2050, the number of girls affected each year will grow from 3.6 million today to 6.6 .6 million in 2050. And a total of 192 million more girls will be cut. But if the rate of progress achieved over the last 30 years is maintained, the number of girls cut each year will only grow from 3.6 million today to 4.1 million in 2050. If that's achieved, an estimated 130 million girls will be spared this grave assault to their human rights. To see a drop in the number of girls cut, progress must be accelerated. So what is the path moving forward? Two-thirds of women and men living in 29 countries think that the cutting of girls should stop. Public dialogues can provide the spark for community-wide change. Change is needed not just to protect girls from FGMC, but also from child marriage. Worldwide, more than 700 million women alive today were married as children. That's four times the female population of the United States of America. More than one in three of these child brides were married before they turned 15. If each dot equals 100,000 child brides, South Asia is home to almost half of all child brides worldwide. India alone accounts for one-third. Girls who marry are not only denied their childhood, they're often socially isolated with limited opportunities for education and employment. In Malawi, for instance, nearly two-thirds of women with no formal education were child brides, compared to 5% of women who attended secondary school or higher. Child brides typically have more children and are less likely to receive proper medical care. In Niger, for instance, only 11% of women who married before age 15 delivered their youngest baby in a health facility, compared to 43% of women who married as adults. Like FGMC, the practice of child marriage is declining, but slowly. In Indonesia, the risk of marrying before age 18 is less than half of what it was 30 years ago. But that was the past. What does the future hold for the present and future generations of girls? If there is no further reduction in the practice, the total number of women married in childhood will reach nearly 1.2 billion by 2050. However, if the same rate of progress witnessed in the last 30 years is sustained, the number of child brides will remain at around 700 million in 2050. To see this number drop, the rate of decline must accelerate. We have the knowledge and programs in place to bring these practices to a definitive end. There is no time to lose.